The federal crime defined under Title 18 of the United States Code at Section 1030 is called the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. And even though it calls itself an act, it's one statute. And it has both criminal and civil remedies in it. And I'm gonna address myself to the criminal remedies, uh, I'm sorry, and the criminal penalties that are involved. But first, I wanna talk a little about this, this law. And I refer to this law as horse and buggy law in a jet plane society. And it's because it went into effect in 1986, which was five years before HTTP protocol. Now, what is HTTP protocol? That's the browser you use today. When you fire up your browser and type in like what it is you want, what it is you need to see, it takes you there. Back in 1986, that didn't happen. Some people may remember the movie War Games. And he was this hacker kid and he had, um, you know, the old school like, uh, you know, modem where you took your, the hook of your phone and put it down and it made, you know, very loud beeping sounds and connected with specific computers. And he connected it with a computer that had like a uh, geothermal nuclear war or something like that and it ended up taking over our nuclear weapons and the, the, just before there was global detonation, they were able to save the, you know, save the world. In 1984, when this was a very big movie, and someone took it to Camp David and screened it for Ronald Reagan, who it uh, terrified. And the next week he had a meeting with his Secretary of Defense and, or National Security Advisor, I forget which one, and said, can this happen? And they said, yes. And from that piece of fiction, we have the same law today in 2019 that came out of a, a 1984 movie. It, it sounds like something completely Kafkaesque, but it isn't. This is our reality. We're using a law that is 33 years out of date. It was out of date when it was made. It isn't tailored or focused to any particular activity that is precise, and it allows for so many actions to be criminalized as to make the law almost meaningless. The Department of Justice circulated a memo a couple years back that said they wouldn't prosecute someone for a simple terms of service violation, there's nothing that prevents them from doing so. Now, what is a terms of service violation? If you share your Netflix password with someone, you're not supposed to do that. That's a terms of service violation. It could get you five years, 10 years, depending upon you know, what, you know, what section they want to go over, go under, and whether they want to use conspiracy or not. If you use your work computer unauthorized for your March Madness pool, that's gonna be a violation of the terms of service of your business uh, for whomever you work. Think about checking basketball scores, college basketball scores being a federal crime for which you can get 10 years in prison. That's how scary the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act is. And I've, um, I've had the privilege of, of working on a number of these cases. Um, there are not that many that are brought throughout the country each year. And I've gotten to work on a lot of these. And I've, I've developed an expertise in these, um, such that I was, I was called like the hacktivist's advocate by um, the Atlantic Magazine and, and um, the last line of defense between you know hackers in prison uh, by BuzzFeed and it's it's I, I, I like this crime as a defense attorney because we can win we can work with it we can knock it down we can change the law and we can litigate policy and that's what I really like about this is that through people's cases, we can change how these cases are handled, and ultimately, Congress is going to have to act 
on changing this really old, really bad law. It's been called the worst law in technology.